Well, you're not reading tonight. Samuel, come here. Listen. The guards, they're singing. Eh, well, they're probably drunk. Perhaps. But they are content. How can they be content with their small lives? Their miserable jobs? <laughs> I mean, they have wives to go home to. What do we got? Huh? No offense. We have ambition. Oh. <laughs> and when we get out of here, that ambition will take us to places these idiots cannot even imagine. Yeah, well, amen to your optimism. <sighs> what will you do when you get out, Samuel? <laughs> That's if I get out of here. I'm sure you can imagine. I can. But I want to hear you say it. I will find the greatest pirate treasure of all time, which I am sure you are sick of hearing about by now. Oh, no. The tale of Henry Avery and his 400 million in jewels and gold has become a sweet lullaby for me. Do you really think you can find it? Given the opportunity? Absolutely. <laughs> Ambition. What is that Avery quote? <laughs> I am a man of fortune, and I must seek my fortune. I like how he thinks. What the hell was that? The opportunity of a lifetime. Señor Alcázar, un gusto verlo. Segment the key. Oh. ¿Qué hacemos con él? Samuel. Are you ready to seek your fortune? Yeah. Vamanos. Okay, last two parts were really cutscene heavy. Um, lots of story, lots of character setup, lots of things to comment about. Um, I love Elena and Nate's relationship as it's depicted in that in those first few cutscenes. I have problems with it later, but right now I love what they did there. Um, I never like uh, Nate's brother. I don't like Sam. I, I appreciate his thematic function in the story. I feel like they let him off the hook too easy by the end of the game. Um, I have issues with the way that whole thing wraps up for them and how everything's just kind of okay for him despite what he was doing. Uh, like, he never gets his comeuppance for what he does. Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the relationship's just repaired too quickly by the end. Um... And, of course, it's contrived that he has a brother there in the first place, but I'm more okay with that just because of how it reflects Nate's character arc. We'll start a goddamn riot. <laughs> exactly. I got no. Stay close, Sammy. Hector is fine. I appreciate his thematic purpose in here the same way I appreciate Nadine's, but he's still kind of... I feel like you don't really need him there. I feel like there's lots of things with the overall bad guy plot here that I just... I like the ideas, I just don't think it's... I don't think like the execution of it was as necessary as they made it seem. Uh, other thing is, we had two instances so far of um, the option to choose dialogue. Two or three, I can't remember at this point. Um, we had the one where, where you could tell um, Sam about your adventures, and you had the one where you can tell um, Elena about the essay she was writing, and then when you'll get one later with Nadine and trying to be sarcastic. Um, that had a bit of controversy when I was following the production of this game. There were some people that were kind of annoyed that you could do that, but it's so minimal that it just makes me wonder why they let you include it at all. Like, regardless of your answer choice, the situation was going to turn out exactly the same. You might get like a slight variation in dialogue, and that's it. Um, I don't really understand that mechanic. I don't know why why they felt the need to include it, honestly. Uh, so that's odd. It's not as intrusive as I think people were afraid it was going to be. It's just not necessary. 
I'm really cautious in this first shootout because this is the first like real action sequence on crushing difficulty and I didn't want to open up a gunfight by dying at any point. The good news is that yeah, I see. later down the line I think I've kept my deaths pretty minimal. I made dumb mistakes here and there where I die or I get lost a little bit but as far as the later parts of this run through go there was very minimal shot in the head start over in the middle of a gunfight kinds of deaths. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. If I remember correctly, Sam's voiced by Troy Baker, who I like a lot. He also does Lego Batman in the animated uh, directed DVD movies. Um, he's fun. I like him. He was also Joker in Arkham Origins. Part of the issue with this gunfight is I am more cautious, but there's also just very minimal targets for me to hit since there's so many other people in the middle of this prison right attacking and killing guards anyway. Like, it's one of those things where if I just didn't do anything, it wouldn't matter much. There's just so many of us and so few guards in any given sequence of this. Samuel, take cover! Samuel, in a minute, we will either be free or dead. Are you ready? Shit! Lots of nearly dying in this section, but no actual deaths. Happy to report. Picking up ammo that I won't actually need, but at least playing through this initially, you never know how many times bullets are going to be a thing. I'm already pretty far back here, and I'm waiting for them to blow the door, but then I realize that um, apparently I need to be closer to them and undercover for them to blow the door, which is annoying. I'm waiting here again. Perfect vantage point, but nope, still can't blow the door. I get too close, and now we can. This is when things get more hairy. Where it's just kind of run, run, run territory. Thank you. 
A blast shockwave right to the face. See what I mean about this action sequence? They just don't need me. I'm just kind of going around waving guns semi-randomly. Samuel Drake. Huh? Jesus, what is next? Uh, I'm gonna take a bath. I'm gonna sleep on a real bed. Yeah. Maybe find a nice warm body to sleep next to me. Uh, track my brother down. Seems like a pretty good start. Yeah. It is. So, uh, how long? do you think it will take for you to retrieve Avery's treasure? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, I get back to the States, I can resume my search. How long? Uh, it's kind of hard to say until I get started. You said you know where it is. Yeah, uh, I do, okay? But listen, it's, it, it's not like Avery left some map with a big red X on it, okay? But I've, I've, I've got some very solid keys. Oh, okay. J just, just wait a minute. Take, take, take. Hey, take it easy. Uh, I like you, Samuel. More importantly, I believed you. That is why you were here. I can, I can get it. Okay, I, I just need some time. Tell me, Uncle Gio. You see, the problem is. I'm having all these doubts into my mind. Hector, listen to me. I will find it. I swear. To you. How long? Six months. <laughs> People are lazy. They always ask for more time than they actually need. Three months. Three months is a back. Three months. Half the treasure. Can you do it? Say it. Now, if you run or try to hide the treasure, or do something really stupid like go to the authorities, oh no. And when you least expect it, I will be there. At that point, death is not a mercy I will grant you. <laughs> The nearest town is 10 kilometers in that direction towards the sunrise. <laughs> it's been a while since we've seen the sunrise outside, huh? Vamos! When I find it, then what? Don't worry. When the time comes, I'll be there to collect. When I swear this, Samuel. Uh, let's me go and here we are. This is bad. We just pick up the trail where we left off and wait, trail? Sam, there's no trail. After Rafe and I escaped, he took his parents' fortune and bought up all the land around St. Dismas Cathedral. We combed that place for weeks. Avery's treasure isn't there. Not that that stopped Rafe. 
Moron's been digging for years, still hasn't turned up squat. Not really surprised. What does that mean? Well, I just, you know, happened to do a little digging of my own. And, uh, I bet your Rafe doesn't have this. It's really amazing what you can find on the internet these days. It's just the St. Dismas Cross. Oh, is it? Because the one we found was broken and hollow, remember? Holy crap, it's still intact. Avery made more than one cross. So whatever's missing from the one in Panama is probably still inside this one. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. Well, where is this? Oh, this exquisite piece is going up for auction in three days at the Rossi Estate. The Rossi Estate? Oh, you know it. Uh, yeah. And how do you plan on securing an invite to an exclusive, heavily guarded black market auction? Well, you don't necessarily need an invitation, per uh, se. Huh? Yeah. And <clears throat> where are you going to get the money to outbid all the high rollers? I could take a second mortgage out on my house, and it still wouldn't be enough to... Yeah, you're going to try and steal it, huh? No. We are. Oh, no. No, man, listen, I'm, I can't. I'm, I'm out. What? No, I, I, I just don't do that kind of thing anymore. Besides, there, there are plenty of other guys that are much more equipped to handle this kind of thing. Like who? Um, I don't know, like, uh... Anybody, uh, Charlie Cutter. No. No, he's my no, go-to no, guy no, for this sort of thing. No, absolutely not. I don't trust Charlie or anybody else that you've got in that phone with my life, okay? I need you on this one. Sam, there's got to be another way. Not with the time I got left. Certainly not with Alcazar. Hey, hon, it's me. Yeah, uh, listen, you're not gonna believe this. Jameson just walked in here with the permits. Yeah. I know, I know, but uh, it's like I'm gonna take that Malaysia job after all. 